So now that we have the basics of Clarice down and the basics of scene assembly down, let's go ahead and finish up the rest of this introductory tutorial series by lighting and rendering our final scene here. So the one thing to note, this is Clarice 5 now. I was using Clarice 4 for the previous videos, uh, but Clarice 5 has been released and I had those videos recorded uh, prior to the release of that. So we'll uh, tackle some of the things that are new to Clarice 5, uh, but there won't be a, a big focus on that, just what's going on with uh, what we're gonna be tackling, which will be lighting and rendering. So first of all, let's go ahead and take a look at the lighting aspect of this. So we do have the lighting shelf up here with a few different things. One of them is this new tool, which is the geometry light, which is also new to Clarice 5, uh, which is a pretty cool thing. We'll be going over that in a later video, but we're gonna be focusing on this right here, which is gonna be your IBL, so your image-based lighting. So basically this is going to be your HDRIs that you're gonna be used using to light your scenes or help light your scenes. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring this one in. So it's gonna take a second to load here because I am gonna use it as a backplate as well. So it's gonna be a, quite a large um, HDRI because it needs to be large in order to not appear blurry in the background. So we'll give this a second to load. Almost done here. And there we go. So right away we have a couple things dropped in here, our IBL and the IBL texture, which is just gonna be our, our um, actual HDRI. So let's go to the IBL and we're gonna scroll on down and we'll go to lighting and visibility and we wanna uncheck this unseen by camera because we want this to be showing up in our background just like that. So let's go ahead, we can actually rotate this around uh, let's go ahead and find our little gizmo here. And hopefully this works, there we go. Had some issues with this rotating properly before, so glad we're not having any issues. Now let's take a look through our image view and it looks like our camera is all screwed up. So let's go ahead and set our camera. So you can just click and drag your camera onto this little eye icon and it will set your camera up. So we'll zoom in or zoom out here and we'll kind of frame up our shot, which we'll just kind of do something like that. So pretty simple stuff going on there. Uh, nothing too complex. Let's go ahead and take some more, take another look at these settings here. So you have uh, some different options here. So you can drop the intensity of the light. So that's going to lower the intensity. Uh, you can also change the exposure. So you can brighten it up or lower it. Do whatever you want there. And then you have your different sampling settings for your, for your lights. So you'll wanna play around with these and dial those in. Uh, we're not gonna be going over that too much here because we're just gonna be uh, using this as a kind of introductory section. I'll go over the, the lights, lighting and stuff and the, the sampling and everything. Go over that in a, in a later video. Uh, I'll be a lot more in depth here. So the other thing that you're going to be wanting to do, that you may not have this actually popping up in your render view if you pop over to the image view. And that's because you'll probably need to select this image to actually enable it. Uh, so that's going to be your background. Uh, so it's going to be what's actually causing the scene to render. So you also have this path tracer here uh, and in your image you have the ability to change the settings, so your resolution. This is also new to Clarice 5. You can use project preferences. So if you wanna come up to edit and preferences, you can go to rendering, I believe, yep, rendering and set the default resolution to whatever you want and then it will automatically set up your scenes with that if you have it set to whatever you typically use. You also, when you go to finally render this, you are gonna to wanna to set this resolution multiplier to 100%. So it's rendering at full resolution. Otherwise it's going to render at whatever you have set uh, in your preferences. So 1920 by 1080 is what I have set. 
and then if it was at 50%, it'd be doing 50% of that. So it'd be uh, whatever, 960 by whatever, or whatever it would be. So just make sure you set that to 100% and you should be all good. You can also set your render to disk here. So set up whatever frame range you want. So I can set this to zero uh, and it'll just render out one frame and then set your file path. But once you click this render to disk and this finishes rendering like you've seen here, this doesn't actually render it out. We'll go over that here in a second. So it doesn't actually save it to the uh, the place that you the file path that you've set. Uh, it's a little weird and it took me a little bit to, to understand what was going on there, but it uh, makes sense once you understand. So a little bit on this image view here. So you can move around, zoom in like you normally would. You move around by holding the space button, uh, the space bar and left click and move around. So you can frame it up like that. I think control, oh, that was not the, not the right thing. I thought it was control F, uh, apparently not. There is a way to frame this up. I don't know, maybe control R or something. Uh, something resets this, I forget what it is. There's a, there's a hotkey for it. Uh, but you can just zoom in and out with your mouse wheel and pan around holding the space bar. Uh, do not, if you don't want to change your camera, you don't want to click and drag in this area because this is a live render view, just like your 3D view here. You can edit things fully inside of your, your final render frame, which is super, uh, super useful. So just make sure that you're not editing things where you don't want them to be edited and you should be all good. So let's pop over to the path tracer here. So there's, this is going to be your final sampling settings and where you're going to set all of these. So your anti-aliasing is basically going to be, uh, if you know what anti-aliasing is, it's uh, going to clean up your images and make them uh, not as uh, stair-steppy, I guess is the best way to put it. And then you have your material sample count, um, initial sa emission sample count, which is going to be your new emission lights inside of Clarice 5. And then you have obviously motion blur and some other things going on in here. Like I said, I'm gonna be going over this stuff a little bit more in depth in a future video, at least I plan to. Uh, so uh, just kind of dial these into what you want for now. Uh, there's a great way to actually figure out what the best settings are for your current scene is by using AOVs. So like I said, I plan on covering that in a, in a future video. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, otherwise you can just play around with these settings and crank them up. We'll increase your render times, but uh, it's not too bad if you're doing just a, a single frame. Shouldn't be anything too bad unless you crank these super, super high. So let's go ahead and show you how we can actually render this final image out. Like I said, you need to come to your image and enable this render to disk and then set a, a render path or a file path. And then make sure you set your frame range as well. And then the last thing I like to do is I like to come down here and come over to the render manager and that's going to bring up your final render manager. So you can actually uh, affect all of the image settings through here and change them to whatever you need to be uh, to actually get it to render out. You'll click this little render button and it will render out your final image, which is how it's actually going to save it to the disc, save it to your, whatever your file path is. Uh, there's also your, different settings in here as well. I forgot to, to go over that. So you got your different, um, your different drawn to blank, uh, color spaces. And then you also have your file formats. So just choose whatever you want. I definitely recommend using, uh, EXR 32 bit, even if you're rendering out animations, definitely want to render them out as images, um, which actually this doesn't even give you the option to render it out as something else. Um, but, if you're using any other any other 3D software, definitely want to render things out as image as images and then render them in a separate program for your final uh, moving picture. That way, if it crashes in the middle of the of the render, then you will be able to pick up right where you left off, and you won't have to re-render a bunch of a bunch of frames. Uh, but EXR definitely want to use that, and 32 bit can't uh, can't go over that enough because you'll want to um, be, have as fine control as you can when it comes to things like color correcting your, your final image, as well as just compositing the 32 bit is definitely where you want to be at. So 
The, we also have this background, which we'll go over this uh, more in depth as well. There's a lot of different stuff that you can do in here. You can override um, your materials, so you could render out everything as like a, a clay pass or something like that. You can do all sorts of different cool things with the, the background layer, um, as well as have multiple ones of these um, and do some awesome stuff with that as well. So we'll plan on going that over that in a future video as well. This is just kind of the basics and then the introduction to Clarice to get you up and running and be able to render out and fully assemble your final scenes inside of Clarice. Like I said, we're gonna be going over a lot more in-depth stuff, a lot more complex stuff as we go here. Definitely wanting to bring some stuff from Houdini into Clarice. There's some stuff that we haven't covered, uh, like VDBs and, and stuff like that. So we'll be going over all of that in the future videos as well. So a lot of fun stuff coming with Clarice, as well as just the program in itself. Like I said, Clarice 5 is out, so a lot of new stuff there, as well as some new stuff that is planned in the future. For example, the new render, which is gonna be a CPU and GPU based render. You'll be able to combine the power of your CPU and your GPU to get your final images out, render a lot faster. That's coming sometime in 2021, apparently. So looking forward to that. But please feel free to check out some of the other videos on my channel. I have a, a bunch more on Houdini, like I was talking about. I have some on Cinema 4D and Redshift as well. So if you use other render engines, you can uh, take a look at Redshift as well. Um, that's some cool stuff that you can do with uh, Houdini and Redshift inside of Houdini. So take a look at those if you're interested. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Clarice, definitely subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Uh, I plan to do quite a bit here with Clarice because it is a absolutely awesome and super powerful program. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.